I'm Claudia Black, and today I'm going to talk about anger. Anger is a great topic because many of you are already PO'd at just having to watch this video. You're wondering who it is I am and what I could possibly know about your life. You're angry with these circumstances, so you may as well be angry with me too. Others of you are very politely open to this experience, not particularly identifying with being angry or needing to look at your anger. It's possible that you're the angriest of all. For some of you, anger is what you've known your whole life. And for others, you've worked very diligently to deny any anger. We all experience anger, from annoyance to irritation to frustration to rage. Anger is a natural emotion that we as humans have made very complex in the ways in which we mask and express it. I'm going to talk about the many faces of anger, why we experience the difficulty that we do, and some ways in which to heal from the destructiveness of our own patterns. The first step in experiencing healthy anger is to recognize how we mask, distort, and then project our anger. See if you can find yourself in any of these 10 faces of anger. It could be passive aggressive behavior. What I mean by that is, let's say you're late to a scheduled meeting or event. Now this could be with your boss, your mother, your probation officer. The reality is you don't want to be there. Or you feel that you should be the one leading this meeting, not them. And yet you also don't think that you can legitimately get out of this time. So in your irritation, you're late, always late. Or it's saying that you'll do something and then you don't do it. Or you take forever to do it because you are resentful that you committed. Caustic remarks, sarcasm could be another face. Now that's the sarcasm that you mutter as you're leaving a meeting at work when you don't feel like your side was heard. Or it's after you ask your spouse to do something, and then they don't do it, or they don't do it the way you wanted it done. So it's that caustic remark you mutter under your breath, but loud enough for them to hear it. You know, I should have done it myself if I wanted it done right. Or is it anger that takes the form of verbal abuse? You know, that's getting up in somebody's face and screaming, who told you, how could you, who gave you license, you're no good, so, so can't you do anything right? could be forever blaming. Others are always at fault. Your mother's at fault, your father's at fault, your partner's at fault, your wife, your husband, the boss, the cop, the banker, anybody but you. You're late to traffic school. And you rationalize. They shouldn't have traffic school on Monday nights. They know that that's football night. So tonight I stay home and I watch the last play. Yeah, that's their fault that I didn't get there on time because they shouldn't have scheduled it on Monday nights. Or you get a notice from the bank that says your account is overdrawn. Well, it can't be. The bank must have made a mistake. Or it's possible that it's guerrilla humor. That's when you throw out an attack, an insult, and then you call it a joke, and you retreat behind a smile. Oh, you're just being too sensitive. I mean, can't you take a joke? I was just teasing. Could be retaliatory anger. Now, that's when somebody has said or done something that's hurtful, and it really upsets you. Let's say your husband says something cruel and hurtful about you in front of you to his friends. Well, you're calm, and you laugh it off, and you say, oh, no big deal but you will eventually find a way to get even. And you do that. You do that by going out on a spending binge that you know that he has to pay for. Or maybe you go so far as to have an extramarital affair. Somehow, you will get even. This is the martyr that's in so many of us, that attitude, well, I don't care. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, but I'll get you in the end and they always do.